So now it's time for Team Bookmobile. And they're going to talk to us about their presentation. So um, let's, who's first? Let's welcome Jim with Team Bookmobile. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. We're excited to present our uh, end video that we have done today. First, we've got Fawn Jackson. Fawn is uh, the technician of the Tri-County Bookmobile. Robert Shoup is the Logan uh, Library Director. He is our mentor in our group. And Dixon Eliason, he's the jokester in our group. No, he's, <laughs> he's the Millard County, li Millard County Librarian, Bookmobile Librarian. And uh, Joanne Taylor is the San Pete County Southern Juab Technician in our library. And Pat Tompkins is the Iron County Bookmobile Librarian. And I am Jim Erickson. I am librarian of the, of the San Pete County Southern Juab Bookmobile. Um, our project, the main target of our project was to present something that uh, some target groups, which Joanne will show in her uh, PowerPoint, exactly why we need bookmobiles in rural Utah and show how vital they are uh, to people accessing information and literature that they absolutely need. And each member of our group is going to take a turn and tell a little bit about um, the process that we went through. I think Joanne's going to mainly do that, but they just like to say something. First of all, I'm going to have uh, Robert come up as a mentor. He says we usually don't do that unless you request it. We'd like him to say a couple words. And then we'll have Fawn, then Dixon, then Pat, and then Joanne will present a PowerPoint and then we will present our video uh, at that point. Thank you, Jim. I hope you'll bear with me as I get a, a little bit personal. When I was graduating from high school and thinking about a future, I decided that I wanted to do something that would make a difference, quote unquote. And I thought I had an idea of what that would be, and so I went down some paths and uh, declared a major and did some things like that. And then like many of us, uh, you know, life is what happens while you're making other plans. And I got a job at the college library. Little did I know that that would lead to a, uh, a love affair, if you will, with librarianship. But it still took some time for that to really develop. I, I still had other plans. When I graduated from college, I had just, not, just enough credits to graduate, I, I learned of a bookmobile job in northeastern Utah, uh, in the Uinta Basin area. And uh, long story short, I got that job. Did it for the first year, year and a half. <clears throat> I still wasn't quite completely converted. I still had this, I want to make a difference, and uh, idea, and was still thinking about possible other career paths. And then I had a, you know, yesterday in the presentation by Dr. Madsen, she talked about that we all have moments in our lives, and, and I had one of those. And, uh, and it came while working on the tedious annual report that we all have to do in some form or another. But I, I can still remember it very well. It was late at night there at the, the headquarters in Roosevelt, Utah. And as I was looking at the statistics and realized that in the past year that we checked out 85,000, over 85,000 books through that bookmobile in rural Utah. That struck me. And then I started thinking about all the people. And then that's when it happened. I started thinking, I started remembering the, you know, the preschoolers, through the third graders, through the senior citizens that I'd met that had come on the bookmobile during the last year. And that's when I said to myself, well, maybe I'm making a difference here. And that made all the difference as far as since then, choices I've made uh, in getting involved in, in the profession. And so when this team decided to work on a project to tell the bookmobile story, it just fit right in with that experience that I had. So it's been a pleasure to work with them, and I hope that you enjoy the video when we get to it. Okay, I just wanted to thank a few people. Um, first, Robert, he is the best mentor and person 
really one of the best people that I've ever met. Um, we've learned a great deal from him. I believe that he actually went over and above the call of duty and in, in, in being our mentor. He drove all the way from Logan to Richville to meet with us when we really needed to. It was at a critical part of the process. And I uh, want to really make sure that he knows that we appreciate that. Um, Jim, he's been our infamous fearless leader. I appreciate him and everything he's done with the finances and every everything. He's, he's just done a lot. Um, Dixon, I, one of the intercessions that I took spoke about the different roles that in leadership and I remember when they got to the one that's really important to have on your team, the one that has humor, I thought, oh, this is Dixon. We're so glad he is, he's always bringing humor to the table and, and it's just so important. We just appreciate him so much and he actually wrote the script to our movie. so. That is really special, and and you'll you'll hear him. If anybody that knows him, when you listen to to what's being said, you'll understand um, where his heart is. Uh, Pat, she's been a great ideas lady, and and she's been very key in having a connection to an author that we were able to get for our movie, and we really appreciate her thoughts and her ideas and being able to get that to happen for us. Um, Joanne, she's the best minutes person. Oh, best secretary. She is right on the on the money with everything, and has has gone over and above doing a PowerPoint that we haven't even seen. So we're excited to see it, and she's worked really hard on it. Um, and Donna, want to appreciate. Uh, thank you for uh, having us do this. I lead. It's been a, a great experience, and special special thank you to Jerry back there. If it wasn't for Jerry, we would have been in trouble. And uh, she she was able to uh, actually go and videotape a, a key person in our movie when things fell through with our videographer. He tried, and they just could never connect. And so the last minute, Jerry, with a hundred things on her plate, I know you had so much going on. She took the time to do that for us, and. I just really, really appreciate it. And uh, that's about all. I just wanted to thank. It sounds like the Academy Awards. <laughs> I'd just like to thank. And <laughs> but that's all I have to say. OK, there will be a, a two-minute break, and then we'll conclude our presentation. <laughs> no, actually, you know, about 100 years ago, well, only 40 years ago, I, I worked at a, a college radio station. And right in front of the microphone, there was a little plaque. And it said on it, if you don't have anything to say, don't say it here. And I've tried to listen to that advice, and I want to use that advice today, because I found out most of my life, if I didn't say anything, I usually didn't get in trouble. And so it's, it's been a great experience. Uh, for, for 36 years, I've, I've loved being a librarian. I still think librarians are weird. and. Uh, <laughs> But, but you're wonderful weird, and, and, and I'm, I'm not going to be one when I grow up, but I've, I've loved it for 36 years, and it's been, it's been great to work with you. You're wonderful people, and it takes me a while to get to know people, but, but this group has been fantastic to work with, and, and the project, I feel, has been a very, very worthwhile one, and, uh, and we appreciate your, your friendship and this opportunity we've had to work together on this ILEAD project. Thank you. We never know when opportunities are going to present themselves. And after we had decided we were going to do the video for iLead, I was sitting in a ULA presentation listening to Utah authors. One of the authors starts out with, when I was little, I used to go to the bookmobile. And it was like the best experience ever. And I thought, boy, how did she know this is what we were going to be working on? She was so gracious to participate in this. And you'll see her in the video. It's just amazing to me sometimes how things just fall into your lap. And I think that's how this video was made. A lot of things just fell into our lap, the right people at the right time. So I hope you enjoy it when it shows. Um, I think I can speak for all of our group to say that it has been a real privilege for us to be able to participate in iLead. We, um, 
when we came here, we didn't know all of you, but we've met you, we've learned about your projects, and we've learned from you. And we hope that we'll be able to continue to collabor collaborate and, and gain from the relationships that we've established here. We have enjoyed and learned from the presentations. They've been excellent and exciting. <clears throat> When the Bookmobile team initially met, um, we understood at that time that we had two things that we were to do. One is that we were to create a, proje a project. By the way, can you all hear me or do I need to? Okay. Um, <clears throat> the second thing that we were told is that the process was more important than the product. In fact, we were told that it was okay for us to fail, but that we needed to attend to the process. <clears throat> that was a bit puzzling to us. Uh, when we're looking back at things now at the end, we can maybe understand that a bit better. In fact, the process is important, and I think that uh, it is, uh, the steps that we went through were key to our being able to succeed, and along the way we had positive steps and we also had a few missteps and I'll touch on things as I go through this. Collaboration in any group is uh, difficult, especially if the group is trying to accomplish some sort of end task. You have people with different personalities, with different strengths, with different ideas. And so in any group, and I'm sure we've all encountered this, there, uh, there are formidable challenges as you go along. For our particular group, um, we had some special problems with our collaboration. <laughs> Geography was a real impediment. Um, if you notice, we were scattered all over the state. And beyond just the geographic complications, each bookmobile has a different schedule and they're out in the field at different times. So time was a factor that made it very difficult for us to meet, to collaborate, to discuss, to work through some of our issues. So um, we did meet here at ILEAD for two face-to-face -face meetings, one in March and then one in June. And we also met in, um, at Richfield for another face-to-face -face meeting. We had an online meeting and then we communicated with one another uh, through email. Our face-to-face -face meetings were <clears throat> the most productive. Um, whenever we met together and talked and were able to iron things out, put things down in writing, make a plan, we had a leap forward that, that helped propel us for, uh, for the next period of time. Um, delving into the process just a little bit, we were faced with, a pro with what is the problem that we're going to tackle. And we wanted to have something that would be applicable to all the bookmobiles, that we would be able to do something that would help to elevate and facilitate some of the things um, that, some of the needs that we see out in the rural areas. Um, Dixon saved us on this. He, he actually outlined for us uh, and helped us to understand a common problem that all the bookmobiles are facing. And that's basically that patrons don't really understand the services that we provide. So we discussed a variety of ideas for solutions. In the end, we came up with the idea of developing a promotional film. And we um, planned that that film would be something that would appeal to specific audiences. Obviously, funding is really a critical problem, not just to bookmobiles, to any library. But we wanted to produce something that would be important to the patrons who use the libraries and to the various stakeholders who determine our funding and our direction. And that would be for the board members city council people, um, city commissioners, and even our legislators.
We wanted it to be something that each, lot, each bookmobile could use across the state, be able to show to their patrons and their stakeholders and, and benefit from it. In March, <clears throat> when we had our initial overview and we talked about what we wanted to accomplish, our goals were pretty grandiose. Um, we wanted in a three to five minute video to be able to show that bookmobiles provide life-saving services to rural Utah, kind of like a traveling MRI. <laughs> we wanted to tell the stories as we see them, and of course most of you don't, in our own settings. There are patrons who have almost no ability to travel the distance to a fixed site library. They rely on mobile libraries to bring books and other resources to them. These are primarily the very young children and the parents of the young children, the young mothers. It's the elderly and the handicapped. It's those people who are living in poverty. There are also large numbers of the disenfranchised in our rural areas who are cut off by cultural and digital device, divides in our areas. Those who remain underserved deserve and need the mobile resources and information offered by bookmobiles. We had hoped to be able to give them all a voice in our film. Um, we also wanted to communicate that bookmobiles are no longer just for patrons seeking books but that our libraries bring audios, videos, computers, Wi-Fi, interlibrary loans, and even some of the social gathering features of a fixed site library. You might imagine that some people who are isolated, it may be one of the few times in their week or in their month that they can meet with others and gather at the bookmobile. Obviously, we could not include all of that in a three-minute film. So, in June, we refined our goals. We narrowed our sights to things that we thought were more manageable. And even this abbreviated list proved to be too lengthy. So we met again. This time we met um, online and we tried to further refine our goals and focus on those things that were doable that we could accomplish. We narrowed our fo focus uh, to something that was closer to what was eventually created. We've been fortunate in having people in our group who are talented and who are well connected, who made connections with those who did our filming and with those who agreed to be in the film. We also had help from a number of people from the State Library and elsewhere, and to some extent, we just plain had some good luck along the way all culminating in our project coming together in the end. The process wasn't perfect. Um, we encountered some of those unexpected snags that one must learn to expect with any project. And close to the end, it got a little bit uh, dicey. I think Fawn took the burden of that. Um, we had a videographer. Uh, we had difficulty trying to connect the videographer with the narrator and with the participants who were going to, to perform and it looked like it was going to be impossible. That's when we got some help from Jerry from the State Library and pieces of this are, are um, as a result of her assistance. We saw the film and we think it's amazing and we hope that you'll enjoy it as much as we have. I don't know that we could have made a better product or a diff a di how different our product would have been if we had played, paid more attention to process. But I do think that possibly there could have been more satisfaction in the outcome and less stress at the end if we had, po um, if we had emphasized process over the product. So I think in the end, we have, um, it has been educational and we have learned, um, learned some things from the experience. 
Now, Jim had mentioned who was in it. I'd like to just reiterate who the contributors were. Jim is our leader and a film participant. Fawn Jackson was the one that took the stress onto her shoulders. She was our liaison with the videographer and a small business owner. Dixon, and I have to apologize to him, I misspelled his name. He was our editor and he defined our problem. Pat Tompkins, whose name I also misspelled, <laughs> was the liaison with the Utah author. I'm the recorder and Robert Shoup is our mentor. And we'll show you our film now and I do hope you'll enjoy it. Oh, I forgot the most important thing. <laughs> I hope that you will each uh, look for us online and that you will check out our online catalogs. This is our main uh, address and you can get to the various bookmobiles there, but there's a little extension for the name of each library that will take you directly to each one of us. We hope you'll check out our catalogs, follow us on Facebook and on our Twitter pages. Thank you very much. If you live in rural Utah or have spent much time there, chances are you've seen a bookmobile. In fact, a bookmobile has been a part of rural Utah since 1947. Many people have grown up having the bookmobile as part of their lives. Obviously, it started out with just books, as that was pretty much it for reading material back then. But the bookmobile has kept up with and continues to move forward with technology and what it has to offer. You might be surprised to learn that through the bookmobile, you can do just about anything you can do at your regular library. As a child living in a rural area and loving to read, I would go through our house and read any books that we had over and over again. And so when the bookmobile became available, that opened up a whole new world of books that I had no access to if that bookmobile hadn't been there. As I was an avid reader, I dreamed someday of writing a book of my own. And that lifelong dream came true last year when I had my first novel called Sudden Darkness was published. One day when my kids and I were in the bookmobile looking for books, the librarian pointed out a book about beekeeping and I'd already been thinking about uh, keeping some bees and so it just piqued my interest that much more. I immediately checked the book out and after reading it I realized that I could become a beekeeper. It was something that was actually a reality and I could by following the book. It's been three years since I checked out that first book about beekeeping, and now we have three hives. We're able to harvest our own honey. Um, I actually was able to take a jar of our honey down to the bookmobile and give it to them as a thank you for the help that they had given me in becoming a beekeeper. I'm just so glad that we have the bookmobile in our area. Bookmobiles, the wheels are still turning. Please take the time to check out our fun, economical way to get library materials to the many rural areas of Utah. You'll be surprised what a bookmobile can hold, and most likely, you'll end up with something you're looking for. You'll also find if you bring your children or grandchildren, they'll love the bookmobile, and it will improve their reading interests. The bookmobile, it's a fun family activity. You will never regret promoting reading to young people. Bookmobiles, they bring the library to you. Look behind you right back there, Jerry Openshaw. She, she's worked with Dick and, and really good friends with Dick, so that really was on our side, yeah. that he one. Was, he we was appreciate very it. About the whole thing. He, uh, he, he was really appreciated being asked to be able to do that. And as you can tell, his voice is a little bit gravelly there. He has had throat cancer, 
And, um, you know, to be able to have somebody ask him to still be involved in filming, he was really appreciative of that. Any other questions? Did you guys do most of the filming? Or did Jerry? No. Don't know oh. who was. Uh, a, a videographer from South Central Utah, we tried to find someone that was somewhat local, kind of central, so that he could get everywhere. He did a fabulous job. He actually had an appointment with, with Dick, and Dick had to cancel due to a medical reason, and so it was just kind of got a little crazy there for a while, and um, Jerry stepped up and helped us. We sure appreciate it. On a side note, the little beekeeper, her name is Sarah B. Taylor. So she, wa so she walked in and I said, Sarah B, I have a book for you. And, uh, because, and she said, you know, I've always wanted to do bees, to have a, our own hive. And actually it was a book that we got from L an LSTA grant and somebody at the state bought it. And I, I saw it and I thought, oh, that would just be fascinating. I think it would be an amazing thing to be able to do. But I thought that was kind of a cute side note. Her middle name's B. And now she has bees. <laughs> Where'd the music come the from? The videographer. Yeah, he provided the music for that. He's awesome. If you need a videographer, I can hook you up. She's, he's great to work very with. Very reasonable. And very uh, creative. Any other questions? What locations have you filmed at? Is it at all your stops? Well, it, it was kind of hard to get around to all the different, there's eight bookmobiles in the state of Utah, so it was kind of hard to get around to all of them. Um, the one with the clouds where he was shooting up at the bookmobile and they were going by, he did an excellent job. That was at, at Gunnison Elementary. And then we were down where? In, in Lyman. We were, we were in Lyman, uh, Lyman, Utah. Does anybody know where Lyman, Utah is? <laughs> Britain does. <laughs> down by uh, Loa Bicknell, down that way, so. Tory. Tory. Any other questions? Steve. What's the plan distribution? What's the plan? Distribution? Well, you know, it's, it's come up and explain oh, no, it. No, 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 no. She's, she's our technology. Five 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 yeah. <laughs> Can we get on that, Jerry? Okay. <laughs> no, we're, gonna, we're going to put it on all of our Facebook pages, for one. Um, we, we're hoping to show it to county commissioners. What else? Um, legislature le yeah any anybody that we need to make a point that we are still relevant we're still here we do good work we bring uh, we change lives we do um, I w we have lots and lots of stories Dixon's been doing this for so many years he could just really entertain you with some stories <laughs> I had I don't know anybody know where Hanksville Utah is that is seriously in the middle of nowhere when the bookmobile doesn't make it there, they feel like they're going to thirst to death. I mean, it's just a really big deal when they can't make it. No, he used to be my bookmobile driver in the 70s in Greenover, Utah. Dixon was. Dixon. <laughs> He's awesome. Yeah. 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 I think we ought to have your video playing at ULA conference mm -hmm. continually. Oh. You know, maybe we can work something out. That would be fabulous. That would be fabulous. Yeah. That would be fabulous. Yeah. We so, hope it'll stay relevant for, for some time. It's, it's, it's also a, yeah. We wanted to create an emotion, like you know, we're it's important, and I, and that was one of our goals. So that's what we really hope that that it showed, you know, that it's important to people because I, I had one little girl from Hanksville, a mother, tally up how much it would take for her to get books if she had to drive or buy them. And you know, it's, it's a lifesaver. Like Joanne said, it's a lifesaver to these people that live in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah. All right, Anything thank you. Here? Thanks.